House on Haunted Hill action. So House on Haunted Hill is a remake of a 1950s classic by William Malone. It's about a man who throws a party for his wife at this old abandoned asylum that's been closed for over 50 some odd years. And when the guests show up, they're told that they have to survive the night. And if they survive, they get a million dollars. But as soon as these guests arrive, they realize that this guest list has been completely changed and they all know who invited these people. But meanwhile, throughout the night, the husband and wife are constantly bickering and pointing fingers at each other for all the weird happenings in the building, while one of them is basically the only one aware that the house is responsible. What I like about this movie is that this movie is a lot more complex and smart than I realized when I was younger. It's probably why I didn't visit this movie that much. This is a movie that I always just kept on my shelf collecting dust and I rarely would go back to it. I just look at it and put it back because I was like, I don't remember liking this movie. But this movie does actually genuinely kind of creep you out a little bit. And this movie is actually very smart, like I said. I just like the whole concept of this movie where you got this amusement park mogul who's known for pranks and going too far with his pranks. And I'll get into that in my negatives. <laughs> Where? Look good to me. But he has his wife who he refuses to divorce and it's her birthday party so and she begged him begged him to have this party at this asylum for some reason and they're both in on something. They're both doing something and they're both pointing fingers at each other like this was your doing and it's like no this was your doing and by the end of the movie when all the layers are being peeled and you're finally understanding what's happening it's like holy shit. How did they plan that out? It might be a little convoluted where you might be like, well, how did he plan that? Or how does she plan that? That plan only works if this plan works. But it's smart and I appreciate that because you don't get too many smart horror movies, which is what I appreciate about the Saw movies. I like horror movies that make you think and pause it and go, wait, what did I miss? And that's what this movie does. It's not like a slasher. This isn't like a fun Friday the 13th movie. It's way different. The movie opens up with like a very old school creepy organ score of all these weird stop motion images and just very eerie from the beginning. It opens up with the insane asylum back in like the 30s when it first like right before it got closed down with all the uh, mental patients breaking out and revolting against the psycho doctor there that was basically rogue just murdering all the patients for fun. And I also liked that this movie also was shot at Islands of Adventure and I thought that was pretty interesting. They went, this guy who owns Islands of Adventure, but they don't call it that. It's his park, and they go on the Incredible Hulk ride, and it has a completely different name. You get Allie Larder in this movie from Final Destination, and then you get uh, that one girl, Bridget something, I forget her name, but she was in ha uh, Happy Madison, but, uh, Billy Madison, she was in Billy Madison. But yeah, just the story, in the just all the misdirections, like all the... All the twists in this movie, it's almost like it could be an M. Night Shyamalan movie just because of all the things it's doing. And we also get a couple of very gruesome scenes and gore. A person gets his face just completely off, off screen. Just his face just almost looks like it got eaten. And before I get into my negatives, I would like to compliment the set design of this place. The, the inside, the tunnels underneath. I mean, if you have a whole house and a insane asylum, that's usually, that sets you up for a good horror movie. And even though this is an isolated horror movie, which sometimes ruins a lot of them, this movie does it well, being isolated. But my negatives for this movie is like the exposition they give you and how this, uh, the house was able to somehow hack a computer miles away from this house through the internet. It's, I didn't, it was just a very lazy explanation for how this house was able to tamper with a guest list because they wanted specific, these specific five people who were connected to the five survivors in the 1930s at this place. The house is gonna send out invitations. There's a lot of energy in here. It likes to travel through light beams, and sound waves, electricity, whatever. And the CGI, the special effects of this black shadow, the spirit, the evil of the house when it finally gets loose, it's very dated. This movie came out like 99 and it, it was not done that well. Like just watching this movie, in today's day day and age, it just it looks very dated. The one guy who was aware of the house, he just kept saying the same lines over and over and over again. Like, the house is haunted. We're all going to die. He just kept, like, repeating the same shit, and he was really over the top. Just his acting, it was just seemed like it was a little too much, a little hokey. 
And I, he should have just tampered it down a little bit. Just knock it down. God damn it! You give me my goddamn check right now! Because I want it! So you give it! Now! And like I said, the it was the plot's kind of convoluted. Like it seems like one person's plan only worked if this person's plan was able to succeed. I'm not sure how what the full plan was, but it just seemed like it only worked if this person's plan worked. And then the ending's weird. It's like you got these two people who survive, and then it ends. But the way they survive, it's clearly it's clear that they're gonna die. You got these two people who escape the house, but they escape on the very top floor and. They're basically just sitting on a window ledge outside the building, like 200 feet in the sky with nothing but a freaking cliff below them in the ocean. And nobody's going to see them. They don't have cell phones. This is 1999. They don't have any cell phones. Nobody knows they're there except for them. And this place is a very secluded place. So they're just sequestered up there and no one's ever going to find them. I actually enjoy this movie quite a lot. So therefore, when it comes to the house on Haunted Hill, I say this is a movie definitely worth buying. <laughs> The Mr. Hat of War will go to the electrician who got his face basically eaten out. Very eerie, very good special effects with just a couple of teeth sitting there. When I first saw it as a kid, it creeped the shit out of me. And the Mr. Twig of War will go to Price who got sucked into the black ash. But hey, at least he sacrificed himself and built some character and redeemed himself. Good for you, Price. And those are my thoughts on House on Haunted Hill. Have you seen this movie? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And if you plan on ever seeing it, if you haven't, you should. If you enjoyed this video at all, you can hit that like button and hit that bell if you're a subscriber to be notified every time I make a video. And if you're not a subscriber, you can do so by clicking on my beautiful cartoon face in five seconds for more. And until next time, I'll feed you the scene.